Lying on the sand, watching seabirds fly, wishing there would be someone waiting home for me. Something's telling me it might be you. My stepfather bought me a clarinet. I got into beginning orchestra, and then the Beatles came along. I would go in the lunch quad there, and I would be like in seventh grade. I'd be in the lunch quad with my clarinet doing Beatle melodies. Or the, like Stones, you know, I would do like Lick and a Satisfaction. My brother got me an electric guitar and said, forget the clarinet. Back then, you'd listen to radio, non-demographic, and it was all like, you get such a wide variety of, of music. You'd get like a Beatles song, then that they'd follow that with a, uh, a country song. They'd follow that with Sinatra, and then they'd follow that with Jimi Hendrix doing All Around the Watchtower or something. And you, you got such a wide variety of styles and influences. And then you also had incredible Motown songs. The Supremes, The Temptations, Stevie Wonder, I mean, just these a phenomenal artist, talented artists that were awesome. I feel like I came from a wealth of music influence. That's in my makeup, that's in my building block, and I'm proud of it. Hi, I thought I'd drop by, so nice to see you. It's been too long since I was holding you. I've been holding on to a prayer. Cause my dreams never seem to come true Oh, I'm never letting go, never letting go Never letting go It's not that easy Oh, I'm never letting go, never letting go Never letting go Crazy. I was like 13 and I had uh, this electric guitar that my brother got me in. I wrote my first song was this instrumental called Surf's Turf. I formed a band called The Weeds, and uh, we played fraternity parties, and we would do Stone songs and Beatles songs. My brother became our manager. We started making, you know, about $100 a night or something. We split that up. I just more and more got into learning songs, getting into the Stones and the Beatles and British Invasion, which was the best. I wrote silly songs in the beginning, but then I got my heart broken. I wound up starting to write more serious songs. You have no right to ask me how I feel. You have no right to speak to me so kind. I can't go on. Holding on to ties Now that we're living separate I like to go where a lot of songwriters don't go sometimes. And then, I, you know, I just try and keep being innovative and different. There was a time in my life where I was trying to get a record deal, like trying to get a publisher thing. My dad was sending me telegrams going, look son, I think you should come back in, to San Diego and work here at the insurance company. 
I started uh, trying to get myself out of that. So I wrote Save It For Any Day as a hit. I wrote it to be a hit, and it was a hit. She's no good, can't live her, but I know I should. Everybody says, oh, watch out, boy. She'll break your heart like it was a toy. You better see the for a rainy day. You better see the for a rainy day. With On and On, I was living in Silver Lake. I was uh, trying to get a deal. I was getting to the end of my rope. I was looking at the telegram from my dad. I wanted to write a song that was kind of like islandish, I guess. And so my landlady had all these tropical flowers. It just popped into my head. Down in Jamaica, they got lots of pretty women. Steal your money, then they break your heart. Lonesome sushi. I think songwriters should keep aware of this. But lyrics are not poetry. Totally a different style. Try and have color in your lyrics. Don't forget melody and usually something different. And having an interesting lyric. Catchy songs, can't get enough of them. Just give me one more. You can blow it so easily in the music business. I was very, very lucky. I have songs that are still played, are still listened to, and uh, it's been years. Timeless songs are so important. More night you have.